Line your ruler up horizontally at the top of your page and mark at the three inch line and the six inch line. Extend those lines down across your paper. Flip your paper to the other side and mark at the three inch, the six inch, and the nine inch mark, and then extend those lines down, completing the grid. You should have a total of 12 boxes. Don't worry if the lines are super perfect or not, and you may put your paper vertically or horizontally. You're going to use a Sharpie to label each box, and it can be helpful to pause the video so you can write them down. In fact, it's very helpful to pause the video often as you're going through and completing these techniques. The first technique is wet on wet. I'm taking my brush and some clean water, no paint, and just applying it to the page. While it's still wet, I'm loading my brush up with the color of my choice, blue, and I'm going to gently paint it over top of the surface. And notice how the water, because the page is still wet, sort of makes the paint flow and it's very soft edges and it's very natural and organic looking. Now you can let this dry and layer more water and color on top. You can blot it if it gets too wet as well. For the next two techniques, wet on dry and glazing, they both need a dry layer of color. So I am taking the color of my choice, blue again, and taking the flat paintbrush and then just doing an even application of color in this square and I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to do the same thing in the glazing box with a slightly different color just to try it. For wax resist, you will need crayons in some different colors. And with some heavy pressure, you are going to just draw some little designs or shapes or write letters on your paper. And then when you are done with that, you are going to take the color of your choice. I like to actually do black a lot of times because I feel like it really pops. You're gonna load it up with lots of water and really make sure your brush has a lot of paint loaded on it for this to work. And then you are going to just gently paint over top and reveal the crayon underneath. For rubbing alcohol, you are going to take the spray bottle of rubbing alcohol and first apply color on your paper and have it really saturated, lots of water, lots of color for this to work. And while it's still wet, you are going to spray the rubbing alcohol from the bottle on the paint. And it creates this cool kind of burst effect. There you can see an example when it's dry. An example with a spray bottle and rubbing alcohol applied with a dropper for some other effects as well. Here I am going to apply the rubbing alcohol with a Q-tip just to kind of show you another effect that you can do with the rubbing alcohol. Next up we have salt and we're actually going to start salt off like we did the rubbing alcohol where we put a lot of water, a lot of color, have it really saturated. You can put more than one color if you want or keep it a single color, but it's important that you sprinkle the salt on the paint while the paint is still wet. Then you're going to let it dry and then you can just gently brush the salt off into the garbage can and it, it kind of has this cool burst effect, this just neat texture that can be really fun with the watercolor. Next we have plastic wrap or bubble wrap, whichever one you want to try. And just like the previous two, lots of water, lots of color. Any color you want is fine. You can mix colors together however you want to do it. I'll try a couple colors here just for a different effect. And then again, it's important to work while it's wet. There is the plastic wrap effect and then, sorry, the bubble wrap effect, said that backwards, and here is the plastic wrap effect. So I'm putting that on there, letting it dry, and then that's what it looks like when you peel it off once it is dry. Next up we have sponge, and you'll need the sponge wet, and you'll kind of use it instead of a paintbrush. It's just another way to apply paint, uh, see some cool texture, you can layer colors, you can do wet on wet, or let it dry in between each layer. We have masking, and there are four methods of masking. You can use frisket or masking fluid. 
You can use rubber cement, masking tape, or avoid the area. And I have a video that goes in more depth with each method. So for this example, I'm just going to use some masking tape and just rip it up into some little pieces and paint right over top of it. And masking is just to save the white of the paper. And you will peel the tape off once it's dry. Watercolor pencils are like colored pencils, except for you can blend them with water. And so you can just try them out and color like a normal colored pencil. And then you can take a brush with some water and you can blend it together. You can also create a wash in the background, like a flat layer of color, and you can let it dry and then layer some watercolor pencil on top of it too. So there are a lot of different ways you can use these. I really like them for little details and maybe things that are a little bit harder to get in there with a paintbrush. You can use these instead. Next up we have a toothbrush and kind of like the sponge it's just another object you can use instead of a paintbrush that applies paint in a different way to create texture. And again, you can do a single layer, you can let it dry, build it up, you can flick the bristles to get like a splatter effect. And then the straw, you can apply some color, lots of water, lots of color, and then you just blow through the straw to create, again, little burst effects. Now we can go back up to the top and finish the wet on drying glazing. And I'm just going to take a layer of wet paint and paint it on top of the dry. And try your brush in all different directions, the tip of it, kind of pull it flat and uh, see what you can come up with. Notice how the edges are crisp where wet on wet is very soft and blended together. Glazing is a technique where you first lay down paint, let it dry, and then you take a wash of color, so color and lots of water, and paint it over top of the dry paint so it's kind of transparent, meaning the color beneath shows through. So it's a great way to kind of slightly tint something and not cover it completely. So here is my completed chart. It's still wet. Here's another example I did before that's dry, and here are both together. And then here is my chart once it is completely dry and I brushed the salt off and took off the masking tape as well. And so when it's completely finished and dried, everything is done, you'll take a snapshot picture of it and turn it in on Schoology. If you have any colors in the middle, just use your paper towel to wipe it out and put it in your plastic bag and make sure you keep the palette flat until it is dry.